Yeah, two, three. Yo, what's up? I'm Adam. I'm Patrick. And we are program managers on the Microsoft Fabric product team or part of the Azure data team. So how many folks are using Fabric already? Excellent. I love it. I love it. Four. Yeah. <laughs> and so we are going to talk about the concept of securing your data estate with end-to-end -end tools inside of Fabric and Purview, right? So how do we, we've got all this data, we're going to go do things. How do we secure that as part of it? So Patrick, let's. So if I'm sure all of you have heard at this point, securing things is very important, right? Cyber attacks are on the rise. We want to make sure that we don't have any data exfiltration, whether it's accidental or intentional as part of that. And so we need to be thinking about what threats are out there and how we can actually leverage technology to protect that data. And so if we look at it, we've got 63% of data breaches. They stem from, you know, just inadvertent stuff. This is the accidental data sharing, right? Like you didn't mean to, you had it on OneDrive somewhere, you posted it on the internet, you got the Excel file under your desk, right? So these, these are things that we need to be careful about. 80% of leaders cited leakage of sensitive data as their main concern. This is important. This can affect stock prices. This can affect customer data. You could have privacy issues as part of this. It's a big deal. 72% report an incident in organizational cyber uh, risks. And then $9.5 million. I can't even fathom that. 9.5 million as the average cost when, in a, when something happens, if there's a breach. Like, there's an actual cost to this. So. When we look at Microsoft Fabric, one of the value points here, and, and all of those numbers I mentioned, that it speaks to this concept of why zero trust is important, right? Like why we want to leverage zero trust from a security perspective. When we look at Microsoft Fabric, Fabric has all of these items inside of a SASified experience, right? So when we think of Microsoft 365 and those like office parts, so Excel and PowerPoint, that's a SAS experience. Fabric is bringing a SaaS architecture to the data world and data estate. This started with Power BI, but this is expanded into analytics and databases, all of that data sitting inside of one lake and sitting alongside of all of the great co-pilot and AI capabilities and the governance that's there and the tie-ins into Purview as well to help with that. So, all right, let's go. So when we think about uh, potential architecture here, where Fabric really comes into play here is we start with Entra ID, right? And when we look at Entra, we can leverage things like conditional access or policies around that in terms of when people can get in and how they're controlled, enforcing multi-factor authentication or you know, the new passkey concept that's out there as well. These are things where we can have that upfront uh, enforcement on inbound traffic coming inside of Microsoft Fabric. But what about outbound? Like we've got data, we need to leverage that data in places. A lot of times we're going to leverage that data inside of Microsoft Fabric itself, but you know, a lot of you are going to be developers as well. You want to leverage those endpoints for your applications, for other assets as well. And so when we think about outbound from Microsoft Fabric, we want to leverage things like private endpoints, uh, any like VNet type operations from an Azure perspective. So those are all things that we think about from a Microsoft Fabric perspective when it comes to security. Security is important, and we want it both for, for users coming into Fabric, but also leveraging that data outside of Fabric in a complete system that allows you to enable a no trust type experience and manage those security factors with inside of the product so that things can be easily accessed when needed. Let's go. All right, so when we think about securing data in that SaaS environment, there are a bunch of risks that can happen when we're not leveraging this type of approach. But when we go to look at Microsoft Fabric, it streamlines a lot of things. So first off, it simplifies that security management, right? We've got built-in security inside of Microsoft Fabric. It's backed by Entra ID, so you can manage that from, a, from an organizational perspective. And then you can define those permissions. And we can even have a layered approach inside of Microsoft Fabric. We can start with workspace role access. We can leverage uh, policies on endpoints themselves. So if we think about role level security, object level security, data masking, all of these things are capabilities at different layers. But then even better, and what Patrick's gonna show you here in a minute that I'm really excited about, is when we think about one lake and data at the lake itself. Are you ready for this, Patrick? 
that we can secure that data at the lake itself. And then every engine inside of Microsoft will, every, every engine inside of Microsoft Fabric will take advantage of that. that. Microsoft. Huh? Yeah, everything in Microsoft. And then, uh, you know, it's scalable as well, right? So in a typical approach, it's hard to manage that, right? Because you got different things all over the place that now they've got their each individual permission sets. You got to validate all of that. You got to maintain that. What if you introduce something new? Now you got to go apply that and make sure you're hopefully documenting that somewhere so that you know what to go do. But when it's inside of Microsoft Fabrics, it's easy because it's all right there. And then uh, just the operations in itself or compliance and, and whatnot is the ability to track those things because we have that lit up inside. You can use Microsoft Purview uh, to look at the items inside of Microsoft Fabric, but even inside of Fabric, we can go and look at those items as well. So not only are you governed, uh, but you're also trusted from a security perspective when you're going down the Microsoft Fabric route. Good. All right, so I mentioned this one lake security. This idea of I can enforce policies for users at the lake itself, right? So when we think about role level security or object level security, these are things that typically we apply further downstream. But this is going back to the lake itself, so further upstream, which is great. So I do it in one spot, and regardless of whether I'm using Power BI, I'm using a warehouse, I'm using a database, the new Cosmos DB and Fabric that we announced, it's all leveraging this security as part of the implementation. Uh, and then we can do uh, centrally managed permissions. We can do all of these things. They're, they're amazing. So Patrick, enough of all this talking. Let's, let's get into the demo. Let's do the demo. The demo. Can you hear me? OK. All right. So let me switch over to a browser. You're a little light. I'm, I am low. Yeah, you're low. I thought I was low. Yeah. Testing. Test. Can you hear me? Everyone in the back? Can you good? Can you hear me in the back? All right. And so. The, the place to start that I, I think is probably what people don't think about, one of the most undervalued uh, items in fabric is the one lake catalog. And so nobody, everyone's like, how do I find stuff? Where's this at? Where's that at? Well, if you go to the one lake catalog, you can find almost, you can find almost any artifact. I just asked like, you though. Yeah. And then you tell me where it is. Yeah. And yeah. so <laughs> what, what you can You are my is, catalog. I am. Yeah. I am the data catalog. <laughs> And so what you can do is you can filter this by domain. So if you're using domains in your organizations, like I think we have a couple here, we have finance and HR. I do finance, Adam does HR. And so, uh, and I, I can secure it at that level. And so then I can go, if I wanted to quickly find everything that was in the finance domain, I could do that from here. Also, if you wanted to look at it by type, and it gets really granular here because I can go all the way down to just look at the semantic yeah. models and the lake houses, because that's all I care about. Um, or I can go into insights and look for reports, or, you know, on and on. And if you have tags, I didn't even re realize we had a tag, but we have a marketing Ooh, event coming up, apparently. And so you can even do this by yeah. tags in your organization. It's, great. it's pretty slick. It's great. Um, but then if you look right here, I remember when I first saw this, I was in, in Oslo and I was with uh, Martha and we both like, what's that tab? What is that tab? Right. And so we clicked it and it shows an inventory of everything that is in my fabric capacity. It was, it was absolutely remarkable. And so you can scroll, you can see we have lots of semantic models, um, probably way too many. And um, we got lots of reports, but if I click view more, what you'll see is just a, a host of reports. You can have, it's a decomp tree. You can start digging into this data the way you wanna dig into this data. You can see we have everything by type, workspaces, just, I mean, it's, it's almost an exhaustive list of everything you have in, the, in your fabric capacity, your fabric environment. But one of the things I like the most, it gives you suggestions out of the box. And so our little capacity is, I mean, our capacities, we have two, um, and our workspace, they're in kind of bad shape. If you notice, right, it's like you need to increase your sensitivity labels. You need to endorse more items. And if you click it, it will actually... It sounds like your admin's not doing their job. He's down. My admin right. is one of the worst in the business. I'm the admin. Uh, and so, uh, but if you look at, it gives you great little messages um, and suggestions of what you need to do. And if you scroll down even further, they provide learning documentation. And I will tell you, and I will Ooh, say this. and I He know reads that. the docs. I do. I read the docs. I read the docs. Uh, and so it's great though, but they teach you how to do everything. Um, yeah. All right. And so the next step, next thing I want to talk about is One Lake Security. Here we go. And so... One Lake Security, you'll have a new tab here for secure. 
And so, what, like Adam was saying, think about managing security again across all of your fabric environment, okay? And so, right now, I have a, just a couple of workspaces selected, but what if I wanted to find everyone that was an administrator in the workspaces I have selected? How would you do that today? That's not a trivial. I got some REST APIs I could go write. Right? You can go write some code, yeah. not anymore. All I need Use to the do, new Fabric CLI. You can. Yeah. Uh, if I go here, workspaces role, I can say, you know what? Get rid of members, contributors, and viewers. And now I can see everybody that's an admin in my that's workspace. That's crazy. That I have selected. Oof. I can see all of this oh. in one place. Um, there's even a nice little, let me see if I expand this out. There we go. And so, um, you could, it gives you like a matrix also over here so you can see, hey, Patrick is an administrator of three of the workspaces, right? So scary. that's scary a little bit, but I yeah. can control it all. I can see it all. I can do everything. And also what you can do is if I switch over to view by security roles, you can see in this particular workspace, I have two security roles that I've created. One where I'm applying column level security and another where I'm applying, applying role level security. You can actually put these in the same role if you yeah. want to. Um, but if I click one, this is the one with column level security. And then all I need to do is I can add the data. I've already added the table. Once I add the table, I can specify what type of security I want to set up. And it, does, you, you, does you want me to zoom it? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And so, and then all I need to do is select the columns I want. I just select the columns I want to remove. Let's say I want to remove customer key. That's what I want to secure from a column perspective. So whoever I add to this role won't be able to see that column. And so if I choose remove, guess what? That column won't be available. When, I, let's say I assign Adam to this role, then he logs in and looks at this model, he won't see that column at all. And I can do the same thing for role level security. I mean, I'm going to zoom in, I promise. But the, the, the great thing about the role level security is, think about how you set up role level security in Power BI. You wrote DAX. And I know DAX, DAX is amazing. It's simple, it's yeah. simple. DAX is a very simple language, but Writing T-SQL is much, much more simpler than DAX. Um, not really? much more simpler. It's a little, little simpler. Right. And so you can write T-SQL here to write your role level security. It's, it's pretty... It's and pretty then crazy. it just gets applied on anything that's accessed so in the lake. if I open up a Power BI report that's connected to this, if I open up a notebook that's connected, if I open SQL Analytics endpoint, it's all applied across all those engines. Amazing. But what's remarkable is if I wanted to add a new role, I don't have to go out to that artifact. I don't need to go searching for that artifact. I stay in the one late catalog. I click new role and I just follow the step. Oh, I just follow. Before I'd have to go to each workspace, each item, and I yes. gotta go set it all up. Yes. And, yeah. Oh, okay. This is so, way better. So we have pretty good governance built in. We have great security built in, but we also have a product called Purview. I won't pretend to be an expert in Purview, but Purview is great for governance and lineage and yep. things like that. But we also have a great inside a risk management that's built into Purview. And most, a lot of people don't know about, I didn't know about this and somebody told me, it's like, you gotta show this in your session. If I click on alerts, right? We're to put this live demos, live demos. And I click on this and I choose user activity. Watch, I wanna show you something. I choose you, what's that's a Power BI report, Adam? Oh. Okay, and what this Power BI report, it, this person who was getting, who was resigning, started doing things, so it created a priority list for us, right? It created a profile of this person. Now watch, watch this, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And so if we look, we could see that I pass up his resignation right here. So he announced that he was gonna resign wow, on this particular day, right? And But he, before, leading up to that, he was deleting files. He was collecting files, he was printing files. And we scroll Whoa. down even further, we can see that he entered some risky prompts in Copilot, right? Wow. If we scroll down even further, we can see he downloaded some stuff from SharePoint. And so that, and he downloaded some Power BI reports. So it gave us the story leading up. And so we probably need to go ahead and fire this person right away or take their access away. If I click on uh, one of the items here, it'll even show me the sequence of events. Wow. That happened for it. And so we built that profile up. So you have a complete end-to-end -end story from governing and managing your environment to securing your environment to monitoring and looking at lineage and even looking for XFL tree. XFL. That is amazing. And we've got a lot more security information out there on our Learn Docs where you can go read our security white paper to get all the great information. Check out our new public roadmap as well to see what's coming. Um, and then check out all the other sessions here at Build for Fabric. Thanks. See you. Have a great build. All right.